All right, we'd like to welcome everyone to the Ohio County uh, Board of Education monthly meeting, May the 20th, 2021. Uh, would you pray with us, please? Dear Grace Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day. And Lord, we ask you to guide and direct us tonight as we make decisions that affects not only our students and staff, but our whole county. God, we pray that you'll help us to make the best decision we possibly can and all of our students be lifelong learners and be successful in life. And Lord, we pray that you'll keep all the uh, people in our county safe. And Lord, we pray for all those that had a loss this week. And Lord, we pray that you'll just help them and help us be the servants that we need to be in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Ohio County Amen. students or schools provide students with the skills, knowledge, and support to achieve excellence and become lifelong learners. All right, you have your agenda in front of you. If just at this time, if there's anything you want to pull off to discuss or something you want to add, now be the time. If not, I need a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor? Motion carried. All right. Recognition. We do have a recognition tonight. Uh, you know, we actually talked about this young man uh, last month where I told you how we had a young man finish runner-up in the state, the High School Athletic Association there, the state wrestling competition. And so we actually have him here with us tonight, and we want to recognize him. And he can probably tell you even more about this story, but I think when he made it to the Final Four, if you all recall last month, and when I was sharing this with you, uh, he won that match because the other young man got disqualified by do using an illegal move, I believe, which unfortunately injured Mr. Pottle and therefore he wasn't exactly full strength when he went into the championship match. Or maybe we even may have a state champion if it wasn't for that. But nonetheless, what an accomplishment. To finish state runner-up is an amazing feat. Uh, we're so happy to have him with us here tonight. We also have his head coach, Coach Adam Lynch, sitting there in the back of the room. And we'll give him a chance to speak here in a moment uh, and, and share some facts and details about his wrestling program and some good things that he has going on. But before we do that, I want to bring Andrew up here. And we want to recognize him. Congratulations, Andrew, on finishing state runner up. That's awesome. We want to get your picture. If you don't mind, we're going to put it on Facebook later. And we want to give you this. Can Andrew take his Absolutely, he can. Yeah, actually, you care to stay up here a minute? Uh, <laughs> Coach, you care to come on up here? <laughs> Mr. Asbury, you want to come up here? Yeah. <laughs> we'll just all get in the picture here. We'll let you hold this. And we'll all get in the picture. And uh, we'll put this one on Facebook. That way I can identify everybody. Y'all can make him not everyone come by. Got <laughs> <laughs> smile. Got smile. One, two, three. Take one more. One, two, three. All right. Well, Andrew, the floor is yours at the moment. Would you want to say anything? You don't have to. I'm just giving you a chance. I'm not good at speaking. Well, you don't have to. We're proud of you. What an accomplishment. Uh, I think of Mr. Asbury, as I've heard him make an announcement, that you're going to have uh, your name or a picture or something that will be hanging there in the lobby of OCHS that you'll be able to see for many years to come. So anytime you come uh, in the building, you'll be able to see yourself up there on the wall. So congratulations. Appreciate you. As I mentioned, Coach Lynch is here with us tonight, so I invite Coach to the floor if he wants to, or to stand up wherever you want to go. Just tell us a little bit about what's going on in the Howe County Wrestling. Good deal. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Adam Lynch. Uh, this is my first year as a head coach. Uh, I used to be a head coach at Washville Trinity, but this is my alma mater. Uh, I wrestled for here before I went in the Army, and, uh, and I wrestled in college for a year. I did lead, but I had a full ride uh, to Lindsey Wilson. But long story short, our wrestling team, we're getting there. We're gonna, we're gonna be a very tough team coming here soon. Uh, but Bottle really had to you know, break that mold for us. Uh, we have 36 youth kids during, right now, during uh, 
baseball season. You know, normally the season will be over in February, and we try to get uh, in there before spring, you know, baseball and things like that hit off so we can get those kids coming in. But we have 36, so I think that's pretty awesome. Um, we're going we're gonna to be building a program for years to come. And I'm just, I'm thrilled to be back here. Uh, I love our kids. Every one of our kids are, are some of the best in the school. And uh, we're going we're gonna to build that criteria where we have better grades, better people, and better leaders. And hopefully, not only you all see it, but uh, the other kids see it in the school. So, hey, I'm thankful for the opportunity to be the head coach here. Uh, I'm thankful to have kids like Andrew. Uh, you know, heck, I've known him for years. When, even when I was coaching Whitesville, and I used to mess with him because we had a kid that used to bully him a little bit on the wrestling mat. So it's nice to see him return the favor to everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but hey, what an honor. Uh, thank you guys for all you do. Uh, and we're going to be a solid program here in a couple years, if not this coming year. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you all for coming tonight. I appreciate that. And best of luck, Coach, as you continue to uh, build this dynasty here we've got going on. We, we, of course, have several things left on our agenda. You all are welcome to stay. But anytime you all want to leave, feel free to leave. You will not hurt our feelings. <laughs> thank you. All right, do we have any requests to speak? There are not. Board members have anything? Yeah. Well, I, I, I enjoyed our class we had and getting to talk with the board, board members that were able to be there and our superintendent. And Can I say something? Yes, you are. Uh, First of all, I want to brag on the whole school system. Uh, this school year, is, I know it's been very challenging because I have two kids in elementary school. The uh, teachers have been just awesome. And you know, if there's every way that they could get a pat on the back, because I mean, how many teachers, superintendents, principals have went through something like a pandemic? There's, I don't think there's ever been any. So I just want to just tell the teachers and the principals and everybody's here how much we appreciate them. We appreciate that. Thank you. Superintendent? Uh, yes, sir, as always. Uh, believe it or not, there's five days of school left. Uh, this school year, as uh, Mr. Gary just pointed out, it's, it's been a unique one. Things have certainly been different with dealing with COVID and battling through and navigating this pandemic. But here we are. The year is wrapping up. Five more days. On Monday, which will be the 24th, the middle school will have their graduation ceremony at the Beaverdam Amphitheater at 5.30. And then, of course, uh, if you all are able, and I'll make sure who all's coming, on Thursday, the 27th, will be Ohio County's high school graduation at 6 p.m. there at Beaverdam Amphitheater. So if you'll let me know uh, who all will be attending, we'll make sure Mr. Asbury knows that. That way he'll have seats for you up on the stage where you can participate in graduation. And if you need a ride, let me know. We'll meet here an hour or so before and then drive in if, if that's what works best for you. As Mr. Evans said, we did just have KSBA conference uh, this past week. I know not everybody got to go. Some were unfortunately stuck on a beach in Florida. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of torture. Yeah. But uh, the rest of you that went, uh, thank you for being able to go and hopefully uh, you were able to gain some more information more knowledge that will help benefit the students here in Ohio County. As Jeff said, it was certainly good getting to spend some time with you all outside of this setting uh, where we could just talk and get to know one another a little better and actually uh, eat dinner together. So certainly enjoyed that. What a school year it has been. But as was mentioned already, I think our staff has done a great job. They've persevered, they've continued to get creative and find ways to be effective. And the same can be said for our students. Who ever had a school year like this, where we're learning from home and then coming to school every other day uh, until finally we're getting back to at least normal school where we've been going now for several weeks 
five days a week. Um, but, you know, we've asked them to stay socially distant when possible. They've done that. We've asked them to wear masks and kudos to not just the adults, but our students. We have not had issues with individuals wearing masks. They all have complied. You know, sometimes you wonder about high school students, how, how will they take the mask? Man, they've been great. Uh, they've caused very little issues and problems. Everybody did whatever it took for us to be uh, successful this school year, and it really meant a lot, and it means a lot. We appreciate all that hard work, the effort, and the dedication. Of course, tonight on your consent agenda, I obviously won't go through every item, but a couple of things I just wanted to draw your attention to as, as you've reviewed that is like in N, you see how we're salvaging. Usually when we surplus buses, usually we bid some of those uh, to see what they might bring, but I'm asking you tonight to go ahead and salvage those two buses. The reason for that, if you recall, is the Volkswagen settlement. Uh, if we salvaged two older buses, then they gave us basically 40 something thousand for each bus and really we got a free bus out of the deal. Uh, so, but those buses can't be sold, they have to be salvaged. We have to show pictures of where we've cut the frame in half. We have to show pictures of where we actually have uh, bore a hole into the block. So we have to show all of that in order to get that money. But it's well worth doing that because it was basically a free $90,000 for the district which we've used to purchase an additional bus. So that's why you see that we're asking you to go ahead and straight salvage those. Also you'll see that we're surplusing one of the lawnmowers. It's, it's the one that we've had for a couple of years now. Uh, long story short, it just really doesn't mow tight enough. It doesn't mow low enough on these uh, Bermuda fields. And so I'm asked you tonight to surplus that. And then the item below it is we're trading it in to get a mower that's a real mower, which has the blades instead of a rotary mower. It'll actually be able to cut very tight so that uh, the soccer fields can be mowed tight, and then the football field can be mowed as tight as the coach wants it to be mowed. We can get the grass uh, really low and tight. Those are just a couple of things that was not usually on our consent agenda that I wanted to bring your attention to and give you a brief explanation as to what they are tonight. And Mr. Chairman, that would conclude my opening comments. All right. All right, you've had an opportunity to look at your consent agenda. A motion and a second to approve it. I make a motion. All right, we have a motion. A second. A second. All in favor? Motion carried. All right, you've had an opportunity to look over your lengthy personnel report. It's the time of year. Yes, uh, that time, time of year, changes. lots of changes. It is indeed lengthy. We got pretty short for the last few months. But yeah, the next uh, two or three will be uh, quite long. Yeah. All right. Ms. Cat, Treasury Report. Total expenditures of four million five thirty nine eight zero eight fifty eight, bringing us to a general ledger balance at the end of the month of twenty five million seven seventy six two fifty seven eighty five. The investments with Baird had a market value of two million two forty nine two seventy two eighty four, and a payout value of two million one seventy five six sixty three sixty seven. On the bank side, we began the month with $22,544,179.13. Our seek allotment of a little over $1.3 million. We received the bond sale proceeds during the month of April. Uh, that was $5,123,407.65. That's related to the ATC renovation project. The uh, food service reimbursement, $265,000. Motor vehicle, 182,000. Property tax, 118,000. State and federal grant reimbursement, 75,831. And you see the smaller amounts listed. 
total deposits and credits of 7.3 million. The checks and other debits totaled 3 million 954 And unless our outstanding checks brings us back to a reconciled balance of 25 million 776 And you'll notice there is um, a little over $9 million difference versus last year, but of course the bulk of that is bond proceeds. Uh, not only the one that we got in April, but there's also funds that have not been expended yet from the bond sale we had in December. So uh, this $5 million plus money that we transferred and the bond sale makes up almost all of that $9.3 So um, does anybody have any questions about any of that? What about that other two or three million dollars we're supposed to be getting from? We want to put in another account. Yeah. start the year with about fourteen and a half million dollars in the general fund um, and I've basically kept the tax revenues pretty flat for the year not a lot of change in those um, we won't get that information until we get the certification in the fall and then we'll review that more in depth with the working budget at that point the seek funds would be nineteen point two million dollars and this is still working off of the 2019 ADA, as well as it reflects the kindergarten funding increase that, that was put in the state budget this time. 9.3 million for on behalf payments. And you can see the smaller amounts listed. The um, total for current year for the revenue for that year would be just under 37 million. And then adding the beginning balance would be a total budget of 51.4 million. The expenditures, uh, salary benefits. One of the things that we received um, with the ESSER funds, as I'm sure you've probably heard heard us talk about that before. But there's, uh, and I'll also show you a little bit about that when we talk about the grants. But um, there's a significant amount of dollars there that we're going to uh, uh, be able to utilize at least a little part of that to fund some of the salaries that would otherwise come out of the general fund. So the salary benefit numbers reflect those adjustments from, from those funds. Um, there are also some things built into the purchase services, repairs, maintenance, equipment, and so forth that are just kind of, you know, if we had something bad happen with a roof or a, a bad um, maintenance issue that costs quite a bit, there are dollars built into the budget to cover those types of things that are that are that would be substantial. So that's one of the reasons why you see an increase in those dollars from the middle column to the column on the right in those couple of line items. The um, funds transfer out, that's uh, a little bit of debt service and uh, that would assume the contingency then would be 15.9 million dollars 
Um, let's see. I did put in, uh, we could do either four or five buses next year, depending on how much we want to utilize the ESSER funds to do that. So those, uh, those other buses incorporated into those numbers as well. Capital outlay, we would receive through the seat calculation, 380,437. And then the, uh, that would be utilized for capital funds request, which we, we do that each year, early in the spring. And that would be used for uh, some of those buses I mentioned earlier, as well as property insurance. The next section is the building fund. We would start the year with 137945 carried forward from the, the current year. Property taxes, uh, we would have to commit 575000 of what is collected to the building fund. And then the state would send us revenue of $1,167,400. Um, of course, all of that except for 63000 would be utilized for debt service payments. And the food service fund pretty much kept everything very similar to what a normal year would look like. Um, receipts were down this year, of course, as you would expect, given the, the less activity that we have in schools. And so you can see that the numbers kind of go down as far as a revenue standpoint. And then I've got the budget going back up a little bit uh, next year. Then the expenditures are, are also very similar to what we have seen this year and uh, bumped up just a little bit in some areas. And then I've included uh, some charts and graphs. This is just a breakdown of the total budget. That's okay. Uh, just a breakdown of the total budget showing the just the scale of the general fund in comparison to the other funds of the district, the 51.4 million. Then the next largest would be the food service fund at 5.1 million, followed closely by special revenue fund of, of, of 4.9 million. Can we the next one? The next chart just shows you over the last, um, over the five year pattern there as far as just the, the budget and how it increases each year a little bit, as you would expect just in a normal, normal activity. And those are based, those are comparing uh, the current tentative budget to the previous year's working budget. Then the next page just shows the general fund revenues, just that one primary fund and uh, the breakdown on the percentages, the composition of the revenue in that fund. 56% in the green is the state sources. And then um, the 28% is our beginning balance carry forward amount, which is also a big part of that, that pie and followed by the local sources, which make up about 14% of the budget. And then this shows you over the last, the, the 2022 budget compared to the previous three working budgets and how those have changed. As you would expect on the left-hand column here, that beginning balance, and, and it's from, from right to left in, in chronological order. So, um, so that has just grown steadily over the last few years. And then the, um, uh, the state sources, as you will notice, we had some, um, as I've spoken before about the 17GG money, well that, that's what's causing that last year blip to, uh, to surge because we've had that, had that to uh, occur. Then the general fund expenditures, this just shows a breakdown. And of course, the two largest functions within the general fund would be instruction, which is 37%, and administration for the district, which is 32%. And then a similar 
presentation of the comparison each year just so you can see the fluctuation and changes in the particular functions that are listed across the bottom. The general fund's kind of sliced and diced in different manners to, to show you um, in different ways what those numbers are. So this just shows it in a, in a function standpoint. Then the last page is, as I mentioned before, a listing of those special revenue grants. This includes local, state, and federal grants. The uh, ones toward the top are primarily local, and then you go into the ones that start with a one in the front are all state, and then the threes, fours, and fives are all federal grants. And then so we've got what we're budgeting in that first column versus the budget for the current year, and then any changes. And as you can see, there's not very many that either are changing or that we know about. A lot of them we don't know about yet. They've not been determined and, and we've not been notified. Um, the big one that's, that sticks out here is the 17GG, which is kind of a one-time thing, as we've talked before. So that will hopefully will not repeat next year. Um, and it was just really a movement of, of money from general funds to, the, to that state grant. So uh, if you go on down to show that section, this is the new pocket of, of funding that we are receiving from federal government related to the coronavirus relief effort. And so as you can see over on the right hand side, that is the time frames that these dollars must be spent within. So um, that will all be done over the course of the next, not only have it started this year and will progress through 2020. Anybody have any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. I need a motion to approve the 2022 tender budget. I'll make a motion. I'll second. <laughs> a motion and a second. All in favor? All right. The 2021-2022 salary schedule. Yeah, next you have the next year's salary schedules, and as you can see where I've typed in uh, some of the information, the bottom line for everybody, it's at least a 1% raise. There are certain groups that we've uh, addressed uh, in a different manner. Uh, you know, over the time with a lot of the classified staff we've looked at different groups each year one group we haven't looked at was assistance so that's why i proposed a two percent raise for them but a one percent for everyone else um, these raises would equate to the general fund you know roughly uh 300 320 000 somewhere in that ballpark is what it would increase our expenses by but we just as you just saw we reviewed the budget uh, we certainly have that at this time, so it would be my recommendation to approve this salary schedule this evening. All right. We have a superintendent's recommendation and they have a motion to approve the salary schedule. Call motion. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Carry. All right. We had a change order for soil stabilization for auxiliary uh, gym project. This was something that uh, two of you got to hear about at KSBA. Uh, one night after dinner, we were in the hotel lobby. We received some bad news last Friday. Uh, we knew this has been an issue. I talked with you all briefly about it before, where the auxiliary building is going to go. They're having a lot of issues getting that to pass compaction. Long story short, they, they disked it up, let it air out for a couple of days. They packed it back in and rolled it. It still will not pass compaction. Uh, the metal building, the steel building has not arrived yet, but they're hopeful that it will be coming sooner instead of later. Um, but this soil is not going to pass without some additional work. So I know Kyle Abney had addressed with myself and, and Jeff and Beth that Friday evening that this is what's going to have to be done in order to get the ground ready so that they can start on the building pad. So the change order, if you look at the details, 
that was handed out to you tonight in a packet that you have in front of you, it is $33,462. But it's something that if we don't do, uh, your other option is digging out dirt and bringing in new dirt, and you're going to spend at least that, if not closer to 50000 So they feel like this was the most practical option. Long, basically how it works, imagine an oversized tiller and uh, dry cement, dry concrete. And they will till up the earth. This hopper will put in the dry cement. They'll continue disking and tilling until it works that cement in the ground so that it will then pass compaction and then they can start the building process. So at this point in time, I don't think we have much choice. If we want to continue to move forward, uh, we're going to have to do this soil stabilization. So my recommendation would be to approve this change order. All right, we have a superintendent's recommendation. I make a motion and a second to approve it. I'll make a motion. All second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? This is a this is a good thing, you know. In the past, uh, when I first took over as superintendent, we were able to create six literacy coaches uh, that were reading recovery trained and have been able to do some great things in our schools. Well, with these ESSER funds that you heard Kathy mention that we've talked about before, with ESSER three, one of the criteria, a certain percentage of that money has to be spent on intervention. In order to help achieve that goal, we need to get some intervention folks. So this would allow each elementary school to get a new intervention teacher to work with those students who are at risk, who are behind, to try to catch them up. And then also at the high school level, we've unfortunately have had students this year due to COVID, whether they were virtual or even the back and forth that we've had with school, their grades aren't where they need to be. So we're certainly going to have to have an additional credit recovery lab in, in order to try to get students caught up and back on grade level. Uh, so these funds, my recommendation would be to use these funds not only for those six elementary positions, but also that additional credit recovery teacher at OCHS so that we can take care of those needs and vacancies. Uh, you mentioned what about the middle school? Well, they already have two interventionists on their slot list. We would actually be able to use these funds to pay for those intervention slots this year, which would in turn save the general fund two more positions. So it would be my recommendation to uh, create the approval of these six intervention positions as well as the credit recovery position. Right. We have a motion. We need a motion for, for create these positions. Yeah. I'll second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Here. All right. Approve the SB 12 or 128 request. This is something that we've talked about uh, bits and pieces for about three months now. You know, when Senate Bill 128 first came out, we didn't know enough about it, and we had to keep saying they're supposed to give us more information, more information. Well, finally, uh, since our last meeting, they come out, when I say they, KDE, Department of Education, released guidance on what Senate Bill 128 would look like. And I've shared that with you all. One of the things is that if approved, students basically have to retake their school year. So whatever, if they're a high school student and they had classes A, B, and C, next year they have classes A, B, and C again. It's a redo. It's a do-over is what this bill is called. And there's been much debate, positive, negative, pros for it, cons for it, back and forth. But I told you all I'd let you know what all of our neighbors are doing. Uh, there have been a couple, few districts that have not approved it in the state. All of our neighbors, I actually met with all of our uh, fellow superintendents today at a luncheon, and it is either already passed or will be passed by all the counties that touch us. Uh, that's Muhlenberg, Butler, Grayson, Hancock, Davis County, which also includes Owensboro, McLean County, and then we're back to Muhlenberg. So 
all of those individuals, they've either passed it or are going to pass it. So again, I know we've discussed a lot of pros and cons, but my recommendation to you this evening, we had 16 individuals, all high school students, who signed up for Senate Bill 128. For those requests, my recommendation is that we approve those requests and the assurances document that KDE requires as well. Um, and we move forward for next school year. All right, we have a superintendent's recommendation. I have a motion and a second. I'll make a motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? All opposed. Motion carried. All right, we have a reason for closed session. Yes, sir, we do. Uh, personnel and possible litigation. All right, I need a motion going in closed session for KRS 61.810. I have a motion. We have a motion. All in favor? Oh, scary, clear. Now in closed session.